Welcome to the TV and T podcast. I'm Adriana. And I'm Selena. And we are two sisters that have decided to let the internet into the conversations that we have about TV and pop culture over endless cups of tea. In our house, the reoccurring questions are, is it tea time? To which the answer is always yes. yes. And what are we watching? So pour yourself a cup and get ready to get into it. Alrighty then, welcome to the show guys. This is a very, very, very special episode. You've got a solo episode from me, Adriana here, and I am being joined by a very good friend and a lifestyle blogger, the chit chat connoisseur herself, Miss Hey Alicia. She is, has been my friend for now 12 years. We went to college together. We are sorority sisters mm-hmm. and she is just a you know, a little maven in the making um, with, her, <laughs> her, with her products, with her blog, with her now new podcast. Um, you guys should definitely check her out. But welcome to the show, Alicia. <laughs> For having me, uh, that was such a nice introduction. Girl, so do that every time I call on the phone. Uh, <laughs> it's like, hi, this is Alicia, <laughs> lifestyle blogger and chit chat on the stairs. Hey, girl, how you doing? That was lovely. That was so lovely. Of Thank course, you. I'm so happy to be here to join TVNT. It, I know you're like, our first guest. I know this is my jam. Guess. I listen I it. every week. I get like so excited when I'm like, did you drop? remember last week? I was like, did you drop the episode yet? <laughs> I literally t- three o'clock in the morning. I'm like. Where is it, Adriana? Where's that I'm like, it's there. It's, it's just wait until six. It comes out at six. I know. I just, I have issues. But yes. no, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me, y'all. I know. We're going to do a deep dive in the Real Housewives. So mm. if you've been li- listening to the show, you know that Selena just does not do what she needs to do when it comes to the Real Housewives for me. <laughs> You know, I, I love her dearly. She's but like, she's, no, I didn't watch it. Mm-mm. I'm like, mm-hmm. what do you think? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and it's not her fault. I don't think she's like, I feel like she's too young to really like love it as much as we do. I like, agree. I, I think I put you on to Real Housewives back in 2008 when it was just OC before they had any other franchise. You put me on to, so I started watching New York first and then you were like, no, but you have to watch it from OC. And I was just like, well, I remember OC was on, but I just never watched it. Like New York was the first city that I watched. And then I yes. was like, okay, let me just go back and complete the whole thing. And I went back and watched OC. Yes. And then I continued. So yeah. that, yeah. I have literally been watching The Real Housewives since I was in high school, since it was <laughs> yes. first, fresh, first season OC. Like I am an OG fan. You are. You all are. the seasons, all the franchises, everything. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to have like a little deep dive because there's no one like we talk every week and we literally are like, did you watch? Okay, let's discuss. <laughs> and we're having like deep dives into this. So I just, we needed to bring you on. We had to have these conversations about the women and the shows and like what's going on this season because these seasons are very interesting right now. I think yes. is in an interesting place. I think yeah. with the fans and with the castings, and we have so many thoughts and opinions. So I just want us mm-hmm. to jump right in. I mean, Love last it. week's up two weeks ago, if you listen to the episode, I did a deep dive on all of the drama that is going on with the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Mm-hmm. The drama mm-hmm. with Denise, the drama with Brandy, the drama with the women. You know, I just want drama. You know, what do you what do you think? What are your thoughts? Right now they're on their trip, they're in Rome, and mm-hmm. Denise is denying the allegations that she ever slept with Brandy and mm. she is saying that she never talks shit about the women. And you know, she wants to clear everything up. And she is now um saying that Brandy has said this very similar thing about other women of the group. Mm-mm. So, you know, what <laughs> What are your What are your thoughts? How do you feel? So, tell me. Tell me your. Tell me what you're thinking. Let's just get right in. So first of <laughs> all, I I don't care who anybody sleeps with. I don't care if you're sleeping with another woman, if you're sleeping with a man, if you're a man sleeping with a man or a woman. Like I really could care less, right? So that's my first thing that I just want to put boo? out there. Do you boo? Love is love. Like do your thing. However, I will say that I think that Denise and Brandy absolutely hooked up. Absolutely. A hundred percent. I think they hooked up and I could see on Denise's face, her reaction to when Teddy, who 
oh, I cannot with Teddy. But when Teddy brought it up, you can see that Denise first was like, she was caught and she was guilty. Mm -hmm. And she can see the tears in her eyes because she's like, oh my God, this is on camera right now. Like this is, this is something like really serious. Mm -hmm. And I think she hundred percent did it. What I don't like is... <laughs> I don't like the fact that Kyle and Teddy have now brought this to the group and they've completely taken this whole thing that was in more about, not more because the, you know, the whole alleged like Brandy and Denise hooking up is a pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. But originally it was about Brandy talking shit about all the women and about, you know, Erica and about Lisa and about Kyle and Teddy. And mm -hmm. she had all these opinions and they've completely like, that doesn't even matter anymore. Like, right. yes, Teddy brought up like, oh, what you said about my dad. And it's like, honestly, Teddy, but she was right because nobody really, like when I see Teddy, I'm like, oh, John Mellencamp. Like that's the, that, that's what comes to my mind because right. Teddy's like so basic. I'm she so even go. Here. she doesn't even go here like I'm so completely over her and I hate to be mean I think she's beautiful I think her husband's so nice I think her kids are adorable love but she's I just, a lovely I, woman but she's not a lovely woman show. she's not for the show and she's very like her accountability thing and I do understand that but from last season where she wasn't accountable for what happened with Lisa Vanderpump you know how I feel and about Dorit. my LVP exactly and, Dorit, and then for her to come into this season and now do the same exact thing over again with Denise I'm kind of like what is it that you're doing right now right so I you know She's super messy. And I'm starting to see now how messy Kyle is. And it makes me okay, so, so sad. Tell the people the journey that you've been on. <laughs> how, okay. I got to talk about Kyle because this is, this is hurtful. So uh, Kyle has always been my favorite housewife on Beverly Hills. So Lisa Vanderpump was like close, close, close second. I think, cause I think she's the funniest, but mm -hmm. I just love the all around package of Kyle. I think she's gorgeous. I live for Mauricio. Like, I mean, I live love. for Mo. Okay. Oh I my God. For her I'm husband. To, like hang out with him. Like that's my dog. <laughs> like Mo, Mo looks like he's so cool and he's stoned half the time. We don't know love what's it. going on. With like, Mo, we down. love Mo. <laughs> we are down for Mo. So I just, her family dynamic, her daughters, you can see are so well-rounded they were raised yeah. well like i i just her house her houses all houses that she's had since the shows have started have been chef's kiss i mean they're amazing so i love kyle but i'm starting to see because i rewatched the series because i mean hashtag quarantine what else are we gonna do so i started exactly. from a season one beverly hills mm -hmm. and i rewatched the season and i'm starting to see how messy kyle really is and she's actually pretty calculating yeah and you remember when she called lisa vanderpump she was like you it's like playing chess with bobby, with bobby fisher. fisher do you remember when she said that about lisa vanderpump and now i'm like wait wait back up hold on wait a minute it's actually kyle that has done a lot of the like bringing up certain things in front of people to like get a reaction and i think what happened is we were so consumed with her storyline with Kim, with her sister. Yes. Who, for those who didn't know, Kim, you know, was is a recovering alcoholic. And, and there were times on the show that she was drunk. Kyle actually was one that exposed the fact that she was an alcoholic, yes. right, on the first season. Yes. And I think that we were so caught up in that storyline that we weren't seeing that Kyle was doing some little, like, messy things. Underhanded things Underhanded to other women. Things. Mm hmm. So I now I'm agree. seeing that this season, I think the last two seasons, the reason why she's been exposed is because Kim's no longer on the show. I mean, she mm -hmm. comes around for like an episode or two, like at a party, but Kim's no longer on the show. And I think we're starting to see Kyle like her true colors. And it makes me sad because and, I love Kyle. And we really started to see how she has in last season, she really was like, vehemently against Lisa Vanderpump and yes. in a yes. way that you could see that Lisa had a change of heart from what she was kind of like plotting or putting into motion from yes. before the season to when the season started and I think it had a lot mm -hmm. to do with her brother's death probably um, yeah. mm -hmm. and the grief that she was dealing with she was just like I don't have the energy for this kind of like game that I'm used yes. to playing with these women and she really yes. I don't think she really was on the the track to take down Dorit in the way yes. that the women like blew it up to be. I and think you so. really saw that that the crux of that was Kyle. Kyle could have diffused that situation and she kept it moving forward. She mm -hmm. kept going forward with all of that um, mm -hmm. for quite some time. And that was really, you really saw it there. Like the veil, yeah. she lifted the veil and this season it's completely off. 
It's off. I mean, this whole scene with Brandy coming to the house with Kim and like, she's it's like, like oh, she's car. just in the car. Like, oh, bring her inside. Like, Good have ma'am. her sit down and come to my bedroom. I'm like, are you joking me with this right now? Like, it, it was so set up. I've even seen some things online where they're saying that that scene was probably taped after. after. And I on your podcast, yep. you talked about that, mm-hmm. that that scene was taped after. And a lot of people said, because Teddy isn't pregnant in that scene. She doesn't look pregnant. Is If you think about where Teddy, like when they first went to Rome, Teddy looks pregnant, right? Yeah. And they're like, if this scene was right before they went to Rome, she would have looked pregnant and she doesn't look like it. Like they're like, you can tell it's like, maybe, you know, she just had the baby or something like that, but she does not just as she does in the current scene. And I'm like, that's so true. And people are like, there are Christmas decorations up. Like the yeah. timing of it doesn't make any sense. Exactly. And I'm like, that actually, it shows how shady it is. Now, Brandy, I mean, you know, we know how I feel. How about do you Brandy. feel about how um, Denise is handling everything now that everything has been exposed? Well, I think that um <laughs> <laughs> bravo bravo can bravo i mean that to me is like Denise, it's like and doing? i love how dorit's like you have to stop, stop saying, saying that like stop <laughs> saying that i started laughing so hard when dorit did that i was like honestly like I, so i would never sign up to be on a reality tv show because i don't ever want to fucking be famous i don't ever right. want to talk about you know things that i mean i i don't live like a crazy life but i'm just saying like there's certain things that you know i'm a private person you don't want the millions of people to know about what's going on every week to be up in your business. And if you don't want that, then I mean, hello, you don't hook up with Randy Glanville, uh, you know, on a date bed when your kids are downstairs. I mean, I I think that's, that's where it is. I think she didn't realize who Brandy was Mm. and she got caught up in a situation and she she tried to back out of it. And Brandy took offense to that and is now talking. I really think that's something like that happened because I do think they hooked up. I don't, I think so. I I do believe Brandy in that sense. I just think her intentions for bringing it up are a little bit more calculated than she's letting on. And Mm -hmm. they're, I don't know. Brandy's just way more messy than she tries to portray herself to be. And I just, I'm not here for her. We are not Brandy fans. At like all. in any way, shape, or form. I like rewatching this show. Um, Brandy, Brandy came on in uh season two, I think. I think she started two or I wanna three. say two. I think it was two because two was when Taylor was going through the whole Russell thing. Oh yeah. And that was like a thing. So she started slow, like, cause remember her foot was broken or some Mm, nonsense. And she was like walking around on crutches the whole season. So she was slut pig. You remember (laughs) you shut your mouth, you slut pig. (laughs) So Brandy, like I, I watched rewatching it and I knew I didn't like her before, but honestly rewatching the series, I'm like, Brandy is an awful human being. Like I'm sure she has soft moments, but you know, being a mom and stuff like that. I don't know her personally, but when it comes to how she treats women, how she talks to them, the stuff that she puts out there, I mean, she is nasty like the yeah. st- she's she's a dangerous person so i, I think that denise probably didn't think that through like she probably thought this is a girl I that think she knew and i think yeah she that got too. caught off guard and yeah and when she was faced with that she was like oh ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> exactly it was a little too late for that because brandy is very good at just putting you out there completely and it's she's just the worst. Like, i can't know? even take her i can't even take there's her. you know there will always be fans that are like, bring her back, bring her back. But I'm really Who out of says place. bring Brandy Glanville back? Oh I've my god. I've the, seen the tweet. in the gutter for where she lives. I cannot <laughs> with her. I seriously I just think she like she trashes down the show and like and, and she'll say things that are just like Brandy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like there's she so takes it, she takes it to a place that it doesn't really need to go. It and the other women are, there. Are, are flying above that. And then she just yes. brings it to a place that it's just like, okay, this is not what we're here for. Do you remember this? Is like now I'm on the, you know, can't stand Brandy wormhole. Do you remember the episode where like Kim and Kyle were fighting there? I mean, they were always fighting, but there was an episode. I think Kyle was throwing an event. She's wearing like a green dress. I want to say, and they were like, she's like arguing with Kim and Kim's like crying and, and Kyle's like really upset and she's it, it was this it was after the poker night at Eileen's house and you okay. remember Kim was drunk that night okay oh yes so I know exactly on the rooftop for the agency I know exactly what you're talking yes. about yes no well not was it I don't even remember but I but think Brandy, it was an agency like, event 
Well, Brandy like walked by and then Kyle was like, can you leave us alone? Like, let me talk to my sister. Mm -hmm. And then Brandy's like, and then she's like, no, get out of here. She's like, nobody wants you here. And then and <laughs> Brandy's like, well, nobody wants you, not even your husband and like walks away. And I'm like, ah! like, it's just like the stuff that she says is like, it, no, she's insane. She's insane. Yeah. And I, and I, I do feel for Denise. I think you're right. She didn't know she got caught up. I a hundred percent believe that she did it. I actually think it's gross that the girls brought it out. And I love Sutton for being like, like calling what's it really out the problem. and like, what's really the issue is the issue that she, the stuff she said, or is it what she did? Like, what is actually the issue exactly. here? Which, you know, I'm really, Sutton fans I love here. I love certain Sutton's journey. I really hope she gets, mm. a, she comes back next year. I really I hope agree. work out her, her custody and like everything that's going on with her husband that has, pre that has prevented her from being a full-time housewife. Yeah. Um, I really hope she gets a diamond next year. I think she is really great. Like, I think she, she started, I think they edited her a little weird. And I think she has one of those personalities that doesn't always translate immediately. But as the season has come gone on, like I really am enjoying her. And I'm even liking Dorit this year. Like I think she's being a good friend to Denise in a way that's still trying to hold her accountable. She's like, Denise, you can't, you know, bravo, bravo, fucking bravo, everything. Every, so you can't do you, that. Yeah. You have to come clean to some things. You have to be able to apologize and own what you did. But she's also like, you guys are being unnecessarily nasty. And she is like speaking up for the other woman when she needs to. I don't think she's playing both sides. I think she's really is like being in the middle of the si a situation in the correct way. I'm, I'm actually like quite impressed with her and she's not like annoying me like usually because she can um, be quite like irksome. She can be annoying. I think she's less annoying this season um and maybe because i've watched the show through that i'm just like still on like the dorit annoys me you know what i mean uh -huh. like because she because she can be annoying um but i do see what you're saying i think that she's less annoying this season she is holding the women accountable she's actually coming for kyle a lot like there's times right. that she's like kyle like shut up like you know and i'm like whoa but i also think to the dorit and kyle aren't really friends i have my opinions on that i don't think they've ever really been friends i think that it was all about like what can we like how can we band together like take people down like an alliance almost yeah that i makes completely sense. agree I yeah think like i think convenient for them yes to be friends. it's convenient a hundred percent so I don't know, but I agree. I think Dorit, for me, honestly, she can be super annoying because the way she dresses and the fashions, honey, I, Dorit can do whatever she wants. Like that woman brings it. She's serving. Every, she serves every outfit. I'm like, listen, like Kyle getting mad at her about like doing glam before Teddy's thing. I was like, but she looks good. Like, why are we even mad at her right now? She looks right. phenomenal with her headband and her little glasses. And in like, situations like that, know? it's like, Kyle, you're mad and you've turned this into a whole drama over essentially nothing. And it's like, what Nothing. are you doing? You're really trying to like play the game right now. And it's so yes. apparent and it's just not necessary. It's annoying. It's annoying. I, like I said, I still love her. I'm still holding out on hope for some reason. I don't know why, because I've seen people that apparently Kyle has not been a favorite for a long time. And I'm just like, I thought, I don't I know why. I, I just, I didn't know why. I thought I was like part of, there was a Kyle hive and I was a part and it was a, it was a big <laughs> congregation, but apparently it's not. So, I, you know. I, I really do love Kyle. I have loved Kyle, but when, what she did last season to Lisa Vanderpump, who is my favorite housewife, like I just yeah. was not here for it. I was, yeah. I really Goodbye, was like, oh, Kyle. Wow. Goodbye, Kyle. <laughs> like, <laughs> but okay, let's move on to the Real Housewives of New York, our favorite ladies. Ah, oh, my girls. Oh my gosh. It's so funny because I've been rewatching Bethany Ever After. And I, I've gotten you to start as well. And, you, you know, the, it's interesting when you rewatch that show, just the journey that some of these women, especially a woman like Bethany has been on through the years is just like, it's crazy. Like nobody's journey and story has come. So has gone through so many waves and up and down and back and forth than Bethany Frankel and her presence. I don't know. To me, this season is at first I was like, Oh, we're not really missing her. Like, I, I'm, I'm okay without her. Like, you know, the women are doing enough for me, but now that we're halfway through the season, almost over, I'm like, oh my God, like, and, and rewatching nice. Bethany ever after I'm like, no, her presence is definitely fully missed. I like, fully. like, I, I love her so much. Like I am yeah. really a Bethany stan. Like yeah. I 
will go to the ends of the earth for that woman. Like, <laughs> it's like, Bethany, we love you. <laughs> yes. And rewatching her show, I'm just like, to see her journey, like everything that she went through in her marriage and just to see it det- deteriorate as her career just really took off. Like, it's just, it's very interesting to rewatch with fresh eyes in hindsight. Like now we know all of the crazy things that have happened in her marriage and the custody battles and just how nasty it got. Um, but it's, it's just so interesting to watch now looking back. So I love Bethany. We, we, I mean, she's really my first, she's my all time favorite housewife. I think that she favorite. is, first of all, she's hysterical and you know how I love wit, you know, I live yes. for some good wit and some good, like some good comebacks and someone that's really funny. Um, so Bethany to me has had like the development from the first season of Real Housewives when she like started, remember she didn't really have anything. Like she had Bethany Bakes, you know? Right. And she, the skinny girl wasn't even the thing. Like it was something nope. that she used to order at restaurants and bars, but it wasn't like an official brand. And the way that she's made it into something, I mean, she's on Shark Tank, like investing into companies. She's on HSN, like she's doing so much. Yeah. And I think that like, you're right. She's such a force. And I think that- on this season, it's completely like, we don't have anyone who is as such a strong and powerful force as her on the show. Like that measures up in any way, like Mm -hmm. in any way, you know what I'm saying? So I think what's happening is that Dorinda doesn't measure up. And I'm sad about Dorinda because I actually love Dorinda very much. And I think that this season she is horrific this season I think she's so mean I think she's so nasty I think she's bitter to be completely honest with you I think she's in a very bitter place so she was the one person that I was like okay but Dorinda brings it like she'll Bethany's yeah. gone but like Dorinda's gonna be like funny Dorinda's a good time and then I'm like nope not Dorinda and then Ramona I mean she's you know I atrocious Ramona is just honestly the meanest like She's just, Ramona needs to go. Like, I have no positive words for (laughs) Ramona, the the zinger, the Ramona zinger. Like, I just think she's such a mean, entitled person. Um, So she obviously doesn't measure up. And then Tinsley, I loved Tinsley. And now Tinsley left the show. Yeah. Um, And then Luann, you know, we love a good countess, but I mean... There's only cabaret. so much cabaret that we can be interested in. Like I'm yeah. over it. Mm-hmm. I'm over the cabaret, you know. And then we have who's out. Oh, so I mean, Sonia is just she needs rehab. <laughs> I, yeah, <laughs> like, Sonia you know, is bad. This season um, has really just the women are so drunk in a way that yes. in the past was funny, but I think as they get older and as the seasons go mm. on, it's like, how much can you do this? It's kind of like that boyfriend that won't grow up. It's like, how yes. many how many nights in the club can you seriously have? Mm-hmm. And it's like, yes, they're grown, they're older, they've got all this money, there's not much going on because a lot of them don't even have like- They don't work. They're not they working, jobs. you know? Mm-hmm. Like they, they've got these like companies that they're running, but not <laughs> They're not in there on a daily basis. Ageless by Ramona. (laughs) You know, they're not answering 500 emails a day. They're not making sure that the supply lines are going. You know, they're not, you're, they're not as involved as like a regular CEO of a company would be. Um, And so they have, this is all they've got going on and it shows like they're just a mess. They are lost. They are aimless in a way that like we used to like to watch them just live life and be funny, but there's nothing Mm -hmm. like lighthearted or funny or engaging about them this year. And they're Mm -hmm. just drunk. They're just drunk. There's no, there's no, like, I'm not even saying like, we need to make up a story. I don't even want that. I I just want to sort of like, what are you doing? Like, like, you know what I used to love about New York? New York used to be like, like how real New York women used to be. Like Bethany to me was like, you're, you know, she's an entrepreneur and she's like trying to get her business going. And then you had Jill Zarin with Zarin Fabrics. And she always had like, Jill Jill Zarin's my girl. And she always had a charity event to go to. And she had her Kodak this and, you know, Bob and like there was always like she live in the Hamptons and there's stuff going on and yes. even Ramona Ramona had a business she had the yes. jewelry line with her husband and they had that business for years before the show mm-hmm. and you know her kid her daughter was in school and you know that she had that and then you had like Alex and Simon and they have the two little boys and they're trying to come up in Brooklyn like yes I just feel like there was a there, like even when we were just watching them living they had something going on that we could be like okay so what's going on with Alex's fashion show what's yeah. going on with this Whereas now you're right. There 
there's nothing happening. Like the there used to be like a certain landing, energy. They there yes. used to be like a certain energy that they got from the city and going to mm-hmm. events, and going to dinners and charity functions. And we're not yes. seeing that. They're not at the charity events. They're not doing these types of things that they used to do in the past that made yes. them interesting and just compelling to watch. Yes. They're, they're just fighting on these like forced like interactions and you can tell that they're not really friends in the way that they used to be I think yeah I think Mm -hmm. a lot of their friendships have have split and they've got some some fractures between Mm -hmm. them Mm -hmm. and so it's it's really they have nothing going on and it's just it's messy and it's 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 messy. It's boring. I have never in all the years of watching New York, even with the huge recast that they've had in the past, I've never been like watching an episode and like pick up my phone to like check out and do something else because I'm just completely like, this is boring. And it's also just awful to watch them. Me personally, I love Leah. <laughs> love I know her. She, I live for Leah. I know love that she her. I think she's a great little- addition. I think she's a great addition, but I think that she doesn't have anything to work with. Like, I think if it was like Leah and like another you just young person, you know what I mean? Like another younger person or like another, like maybe two other people, I think that that would bring it out. Like that would be something to work with. I Honestly, agree. I think they need to recast the entire show. Like I, I think keep Leah, I maybe, 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 maybe keep um Dorinda I don't know what it is about Dorinda that I'm like I feel like if she's around somebody else like around other people she'll do better yeah um, but everyone else can go like Sonia Luann, Luann Ramona completely they can leave. agree they I can completely go. agree I think Leah is great and I do think Dorinda with some new people might like it'll just be a fresher energy but I do yeah. think she also needs to like get her drinking under control yes. I think there it's her like the lines are really starting to get blurry for her yeah, I do think they, I think they need to go um, younger. Like I think they need to go like thirties and forties, not so much fifties. Mm. Um, like the cast is right now, you know, it, they need to skew younger and like more hip. More um, hip. Mm. I've seen that they are floating the idea of bringing on, I think her name is Alicia Barton. She is a host for entertainment. Black girl. Yes. Yes. She's mm-hmm. young. She's hip. She yes. works for entertainment tonight. And I think that's interesting. Like somebody like that with like somebody with like Leah would be interesting. I just do think they're going to need to get rid of some of the OGs. I think Ramona and Sonia are done though. Like yeah, I think they need to go. keep Luann and Dorinda, but I think Ramona and Sonia really, they, they're done for me. It's, I'm yeah, not feeling them. I cannot do another season of Ramona and the entitlement. And like, it's funny because in some ways, Ramona says things. They're like, "Damn, Ramona, you were right. Like that. That's right. Like what she said yeah. about Dorinda and her drinking and and I'm Sonia. Cool. And like, I get it. But then most, but that's f- few and far between. For the most part, she's so rude. Always she's on so the wrong title. Uh, hor- <laughs> literally on the wrong side of history um yeah so i just you know if anybody from bravo hears us just completely recast the entire show yeah that's how i feel we need to shake it up i yeah i completely yeah. agree okay yeah. so last but not least our new favorites well it's not new for me because i've been watching it's since new. season one but i just feel you like have. you have you i brought you into the fold <laughs> You brought me just, into you brought you know? me in. I started it and I was like, you know, I'm not a fan of this. And I had I had to come, I had to have a come to Jesus moment. I had to take a break and then come back. And now we're good. Now we're good. Girl Housewives we're good. of Potomac. Mm. Guys, Girls. I posted about this on our Instagram. And a lot of people said they ha- don't watch this season. And like it's I don't really cool. see a lot of why <laughs> wa- like talking about it the same way that the other seasons get talked about. Um, Mm -hmm. on Twitter and things. So guys, you have to get into the Real Housewives of Potomac. The first season is a little rough. They, they're, this first season is like, they, they have a lot of conversations about like colorism and, and, you know, black identity that I think gets convoluted and people don't really want to hear that. And and I think (laughs) I didn't. Season I was two. like, I'm good off of all this talk right now. Like, I agree. I agree. But I think it gives you context for a lot of the, the cast. So it's good to start there. But season two, they really start to kick it off. And they are just in full swing every season after that. And I think this so is good. now their fourth or fifth season. Fifth season? This is season five, I want to say. Yeah. I think it's season five. Yeah. And they are just, oh my God, they are, there's two episodes out now and it is literally so on fire. Like I watched like, I was <laughs> gagging. 
it's so good. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we've got Ashley Darby, who just had a new baby. And, you know, in the season trailer, you know, we see that there's going to be more allegations coming about coming out about her husband and mm-hmm. inappropriate kind of like behavior. This is not the first time he's had that. Last season, he had inappropriate behavior and a lawsuit from one of the producers of the show for um, like improper touching like you know i he think groped he, somebody he, he groped someone like he grabbed someone's butt or something yes a cameraman ridiculous. so yeah. you know like yeah. he's had some 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 questionable things in the past like a couple of years ago he also had like nude photos leaked like <laughs> it it was like he's messy like they are really the couple that keeps on giving oh, um disaster you know giselle is another like she is like the top dog of i think like she is the star of the show because she is like messy she's direct she does what she needs to do typical like real housewife like bring the drama yes like yes i agree She like throws herself on the fire to get the the shit started yes and she is just she's always messy always shady but you love her she's compelling she's funny with it and it's just so it's just great. You know, we've got Monique Samuels, her, she's got I... allegations that she's cheated with her, her trainer. I okay. Was... Let's yeah. back it up. I w- so, okay. This entire time I have been <laughs> trying to figure out what, okay. I knew last season why Monique and Candace kind of like got into their thing. Cause Candace, I know we haven't gotten there yet, but Candace is rude as shit and she's crazy. Oh she's so, so I, awful. she's so abrasive and just like constantly just going, going, going. So yeah. I understood that. But then, this, but then they talked at the reunion, they hugged, they both cried. And I was like, mm-hmm. honestly, they really were really close. So I really yes. think that they'll be able to get it back together. And then now this season, I was wondering what happened. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. Gonna happen. <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. And it hasn't stopped. I mean, it's just bad. Yeah, but now we see why. On, on because, of the, because of the allegations and she brought Sharice around. So yes. now I'm starting to see what's happened. I'm like, that's what happened. And she did it on purpose. I mean. Oh, absolutely. That was a calculated move. You cannot 100%. tell me anything different. Sharice has not been on the show for like two seasons Years. Now. And yeah. she's now coming around talking about Monique and her her supposed issues with her. So, her what, so what is the story? Is I heard it was her trainer, but then I saw something on Twitter, you know, black Twitter. I saw something on Twitter with people saying that like there were pictures or something like that. But then I'm like, I've never seen pictures. And I feel like if Bravo knew there was pictures, they find the pictures. Yeah, they would have inserted those pictures. Like 100%. in that moment, they're so 100%. shady. Yeah. Um, I I heard that she was apparently seen out and about with her trainer multiple times, like in a setting that is not like we're being trained. And so, um, you know, word on the street is that she might have been doing the the, 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 the little nasty, you know. But oh my god, her husband is so creeping. nice, though. I love Chris. Chris is I think like Chris the is best like a big teddy bear. Husband. Oh my God, he is just so great. I love him. I love their and family. And he adores I love their her. I, I agree. And they just had a baby. What is happening right now? I I'm know. so confused. I don't know. Like, I, Monique doesn't doesn't seem like that kind of person, but you you never know. Like you can't put anything against anybody. Uh, and yeah, that's true. You know, that's true. you, you can't don't know people like for anyone, um, especially people that we don't know. This is all just conjecture. <laughs> We're literally making these things up off Twitter. Like honestly, <laughs> right? Um, but I think it's going to be interesting to see it play out. They get physical. They get into a physical altercation. Girl, and Candace, and you know, Candace has been very nasty in the way that she speaks to the women and the way that she can herself within them these are supposed to be her friends and more so than that they're her co-workers and she doesn't make it she doesn't try to make it a pleasant experience for anyone in any way and that's just like not a lot of fun to watch you know we want people that are messy we want people that can get into the mud we want people that can rile things up but we don't I think when it crosses over into it being inherently nasty and just un- necessarily provoking that's when the the viewers really start to turn on you and I do think now we're seeing that happen with Candace I think so, last year it was kind of like she was on the fence but I think on, this but now this really year you her can see it I think she likes attention I think she literally loves attention and I think she'll do anything to get attention and she'll provoke she'll make comments like oh drag me like when she grabbed the knife and was gonna like she wasn't really gonna throw that knife at Ashley you know what I mean? yeah. like you can literally like you can watch her 
and see her, but her grabbing a knife was for dramatics. Like everything was right. hers, like just be dramatic and let's like get over the top. Cause she knows Chris was going to hold her back. She knows Chris, like he wasn't going to let her go anywhere and throw a knife. And that's exactly what he did. She waited until he was right behind her to like pick up a knife when he, she knows that he's not going to let her do that. And then when the, the drag me Monique or whatever, when they were at that farm and Monique was pregnant, she waited until Karen was standing in front of her. And then Monique had walked all the way yeah. across the field to be like, drag me Monique. Like she's, I can't. I cannot with Candace. I can't with the, I, I, I can't with the, the, like the, the, what's it called? Like every time something happens, it's like, like, oh my I gosh. Can't. I, when she uh, was like, crying I over I her mother's like awful speech at the engagement party, like I'm really over her storyline also. Like, okay, mom, you married yeah. a white ma- man. You guys don't have the money to do the things that you're, you want to do. Yeah. And- your mother is obnoxious and she hurts your feelings and you're crying and it's emotional. Like, I'm just like over the whole thing. I'm just like over, over her. Like, I, over. I don't know. And I actually really liked her, her first season and last season. And this year I'm just kind of like, I'm not feeling you. Like something is uh-huh. some, something is, is something a is awry. Something yeah. is awry. You know? I am not a fan. I started not being a fan of her since last season. I liked her the first season. Um, and then last season I was like, mm, yeah, that's going to be no for me, dog. Like I just, cause Monique's my girl. And I think I was just like, you She's come from great. Monique. That's it. Like, honestly, I'm not a big fan of Giselle with this whole Monique situation. I think that <laughs> there's no re I, I just don't even understand why Giselle is like hating on Monique. Like mind you, her repeating the story was different but like last season when she was like beefing with Monique I was like where is this coming from like Monique's just like living and pregnant like she like she doesn't even mm-hmm. know where any of this energy from Giselle was coming from so I, I think Giselle I is just we'll to see. inherently messy and she just likes to get into things with people and she's nosy she's really nosy like she just wants to know and like be saying things you're right, right. you're right I just yeah. think she likes to get into the mud and I think that's what happens with her but I, I do like her and I love her dynamic with Robin I think yes kind of her back and forth cat and mouse game that she plays with Karen is also really interesting because mm. it's never too nasty it's just enough just enough that's where she she does sit in a place that it's like an easy medium she she's almost out of pocket but not so much and that's Mm. why you continue to like her and so I think she she she, she plays her role well I was like girl get her an Emmy (laughs) you were so excited I I really like her I think she's just nasty enough like yeah I think she really plays that kind of like villainous like I'm gonna I'm gonna poke you kind of role and I just like I enjoy her so much (laughs) Her house is horrible, but I enjoy it. Oh my she's god, okay. her taste! Like it's, honestly, it's, she's never been able to dress well, and she ever, just has ever awful taste. Like she awful. literally is still in like 2011. Like it's oh just my god! Really bad. Like with the, really the pink bad. and the this and the the mirrors and the stuff. So I'm like, girl, like it would have taken you nothing to go to Pottery Barn and get an interior designer. Like it would have been nothing for you. Like. Right. I just don't understand like, it. Like, you literally gutted this know. house. Like, you definitely have the money to maybe not, like, hire a huge designer to, like, do the house in, like, $10,000 couches, but, like, you could have done a little, I, I just, the pink, I just, I and I have, I'm ah! has a pink wall, and I just, like, I, I can't, it's just so tacky. It's too it's, much. It's, it's, like, bad Pinterest. It's, like, a bad Pinterest board. Like, it's just... <laughs> Bad Pinterest. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but, but facts, facts though. But no facts. Though. But facts. Yes. Oh my gosh. So this was so much fun. Thank so you much so much fun. for coming on the show and deep diving. Like Anytime. we are obviously completely like in this world, this universe, the Bravo universe. And you know, I hope the viewers enjoy this. I just feel like not enough people like love the real housewives for me like well no so what i'm realizing is there's actually a big real housewives like community like there's actually but the thing is like maybe not the people that we hang out with yeah. but there's actually like a huge housewives like on twitter Twitter, oh my god! Like if you yeah. put a hashtag in on Twitter, I mean the the threads go on and on for days. Yeah. Um. You know, on Instagram, there's tons of accounts. There's podcasts about it. There's famous people that talk about it. Like it's just it's a thing. But I think 
again, you know, not all of our friends are into it. I know. I guess I <laughs> just also, don't have enough people to talk about it with. And I think it's a guilty pleasure too, because I'll like talk about it and people are like, ah, whatever. And then like my boyfriend will come and I'm watching it land and he's like, oh, is that Portia? And I'm just like, <laughs> I know about Portia. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, or he'll be like, oh, Nini. Like, or he'll be like, I like candy. Like, you know, and I'm just like, yeah. but you judged me when I was watching it last yeah. Sunday, but now you know who these people are. So right. I think it is very much like a, People don't even want to admit that they watch it because it's just like so obnoxious sometimes, but I'm fine with it. That's why we like it. I live for it. I love it. I love it. I live. I'm excited. If they did a Real Housewives of Miami, maybe I would. I mean, if they would, they would bring it back. Like, I really think Miami should have never gotten canceled. It It should have. Andy says that like, even though he says that people stopped watching, he's like, it's weird because it was one of those franchises where people talked about it, but then people stopped watching it. So that's what happened. And when you lose viewers, like it's about money, right? And if they're losing viewers, it's just like, why are they going to continue to air this? So, you know, that I think that's what happened. But I think if they brought some like black girls in Miami and some like, right? Like, like, not so much the old heads, like we could keep the Leah Blacks, but just like some like, maybe Mm -hmm. like the young Miami like crowd, maybe a couple old money folks in there and just like, just let it go. I mean, come on. I know. I love it. Okay, so plug us. Tell us where we can find you, all of our listeners. You have to check out her blog, her podcast, and her Instagram. So shout yourself out. Yeah, so I have, I am Hey Alicia Hey um, on Instagram, on Twitter. I'm also on Facebook, on Pinterest, on TikTok. I mean, I don't know if we'll have TikTok anymore, (laughs) but okay. Okay. You're (laughs) TikToking? I am on, listen, I have one video that I've made, but I go on TikTok. Like, I think it's such a great, like people are really creative and there's so much content on there on TikTok. Like, it's not just the dances. There's like DIY stuff on there. There's like this black girl skating hive. There's like a black girl skating hive on TikTok. There's just so much. I mean, but then the other day, my, you know, six-year-old nephew was like, you know, Didi, you have TikTok? And I was like, you see, this is where I need to like... (laughs) because he has a tiktok and he makes videos so here i am mm-hmm. but i guess i'm in with the times but okay. i am hey I'm alicia like hey into it <laughs> i love it hey alicia hey um and i also have a website hey alicia.com um i have a podcast chit chat count us here um we really do talk about anything uh, different topics i have a guest host every week um and we just dive right into a particular topic we talk about a, a bunch of other uh random things about what's going on and i'm super excited about it and on my website i actually have a shop as well. Um, and I sell apparel, we have t-shirts, hoodies. Um, I started it January of this year and I wasn't expecting it to be as big as it has been, but it's actually been really awesome. I'm really excited about it. And, um, you know, in this economy, you got to do something (laughs) (laughs) in this economy, you got to do a little something. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that's what I have going on. That's my ventures. And, you know, I'm super excited about it. Follow me, add me, tweet me, twat me, you know? Yes. And we did, um, we did an episode of her podcast. So I am on there and we are talking about dating in Miami, dating in quarantine, just dating tips in general for you singles Mm -hmm. like me. (laughs) Um, The singles. (laughs) And it was great. It was lots of fun. So you're going to, I'm going to link all of her, all of her information for you guys. And thank you so much for listening. We will yes. be back next Friday with another episode of the TV and T podcast. Thank so you. Bye. Bye. Can't wait. Peace and love. Bye.